like a sugar fasting diet, right? Just fruits and honey and candy. And then I'll make it in the context of upregulating my FGF 21 and fat loss. When in reality, I just want to eat candy. You know, you know what increases mods, you know what increases mod C levels? What's that? Exercise. Yeah. Look at that. High yeah. and then high high intensity cardio causes um mitochondrial migration. <laughs> so like people don't realize this as well, that like your mitochondria move around your body. They they do not stay in the same cell. Like if your if your body so if you have a heart attack and your your heart now requires a lot of energy, what happens? All your mitochondria go towards the heart to try and keep that alive from with ATP. So depending on if you do high intensity interval training cardio, you upregulate the mitochondria in the muscle cells of your leg or within obviously your aerobic system. So looking at these like not fancy things, like telling someone go and kill yourself on a 15 second Wingate sprint, you know, five or six times and do that four times per week on top of your lifting. It's not as sexy as I'll oh, take 400 micrograms SLU and your mitochondrial massively increase in number. You know, it's funny if, if you do that for a month, the wing gate sprints or the high intensity cardio or just training balls to the wall, and then you add this stuff in, then you notice a fucking difference because yeah, you start with fitness first. <laughs> like I remember like ubiquinol, I introduced it a couple of years ago. Like, just take a little bit of ubiquinol pre-workout. Yeah, but it's an antioxidant. It will lower your anabolic response. Okay, shut the fuck up, you little midget piece of shit. Um, but people that train fucking insane, they're like, holy shit, this is such a difference. But you need to train insane first before you notice a difference, before you notice this mitochondrial yeah. upregulation and the electron transport chain improving and, you know, the, 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 the respiration improving. And so a, a lot of people may, might complain about new things that we introduce that doesn't do anything, but the foundation needs to be there first. And, and again, this is the anabolic roundtable. So if you're not anabolic, you're not doing the things that you need to do to be anabolic, like training hard and taking a little bit of TRT and then some and, and, and eating a lot of protein. And yeah, what's the point? What's the point of myonostal triparophosphate when you have no muscle to oxygenate? Yeah, rent over. <laughs> so, Kurt, would you like to try the the fruit uh, fasting diet? No, I think <laughs> I think I'm good. <laughs> I think I've got the diet. I've got the diet thing down pat. I think. I think I think you got it locked down. I'm yeah. good. I'm good with it. Dean, are you going to change your uh, your your um, oh. your your pre contest uh, or pre holiday uh, stack to a... include more fruits? <laughs> Plenty more anabolic fruit. Yeah, anabolic, more more pineapples and bananas and apples. <laughs> the hard apples, not well, the, uh, the, the full ones. Uh, well, the, the whole setup, obviously, of what we're doing now at the moment is to try and keep here as safe as possible. So pineapple for me with the low estrogen is no longer a delicacy I can enjoy. So we have to do things a little more intelligently. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I don't think I don't think I'm going to be changing my diet to be eating Harry Bows and fruits and excessive sugars just to increase my FGF twenty one when I do seventy two to five day fasts, you know, a couple of times a year. I think what I'm going to do next time is, um, you know, when I get sick of the ketogenic diet, I'm just going to schedule one Sunday to eat like this, like a sugar fasting diet, right? Just fruits and honey and candy. And then I'll make it in the context of upregulating my FGF 21 and fat loss, when in reality, I just want to eat candy. <laughs> right? It's like all those guys that, like, I'm not trying to shit on the diet, but like, like, people go on TRT, I need to increase my, uh, you know, the, this and that. So just, just say you want to use steroids, man. Just say you want to eat candy. It's fine. It's just call it for what it is. Cheat meal know. rebranded. Yeah. And it's, it, again, it's, you know, people have been doing this for a long time. You guys know about skip loading, right? It's mm -hmm. also very high gonna, carbs. Yeah. And that's been around for decades. And, yeah. and the guy would just customize, like Ken Skip Hill would customize your skip loads week by week, starting with a four hour eating window to six hours to eight hours to 12 hours, and then design the entire carb loading protocol around that about the foods that worked for you. And every mm -hmm. skip load looked different. So I think this is just very nuanced uh, skip loading with fruits. 
And if it works, it works. Great. Uh, I don't think it will work for anybody. Uh, I don't think it's very sustainable. But if you want to do it for a week or two, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. I really wonder what happens with Chase after about two weeks. Um, he's pretty in tune with his body. This is blood work. And he's, he's probably the biggest dude who's ever tried this. Yeah. What's his cycle? What is he on while he's doing this? Mm, test and retrotide probably in GH. And Mod C in SLU. Are we counting GLPs as part of the cycle now? It's, it's, it's a compound. I don't know. We're it's like half, half a milligram GLP uh, retro to tight mono Wednesday Friday. I think well, see, here's another doing. one. We talked about dietary fiber. So uh, short chain fatty acids produce GLP, or GLP-1. So perhaps if more people ate a balanced diet, they wouldn't need the GLP drug. <laughs> Just saying. Well, let's say pro, pro, propionate is what improves your GLP secretion. Yeah, but that's too simple, right? Eat right. <laughs> Does it? Oh, maybe that's why the testosterone propionate is working so well right now. <laughs> A little different. <laughs> yeah, it's a little different. Oh, you mean the, the propionate? Uh, yeah. yeah <laughs> the fatty ester. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Hilarious. Not that this yes. company doesn't work. Uh, it does work. I mean, it's, 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 we're, we're still, still pretty saucy. It's not bad. 235 it, pounds, baby. It's all that fruit. Yeah, it's all that fruit that is still stuck in there. And I would, I really would wonder what happens to people's liver with all this uh, fructose coming in. It's got to be fantastic for uh, you. Uh, and well, the funny nice. thing is, like a carnivore diet is also a great way to get non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> aren't the same guys that are preaching this? Aren't they the ones that were just doing the carnivore diet? Uh, yeah, Mark yeah. So Mark, Mark Bell, Bell, Mark yeah. Bell got great results on a carnivore diet, but of course. Like if you follow a strict carnivore diet with the carbohydrate refeeds, then you get some mitochondrial dysfunction as well. And it's the, the free form fatty acids that eventually ruin your insulin sensitivity. So, of course, you can mitigate that with injectable carnitine to, to kind of clean up the free form fatty acids and then the triglycerides and stuff and the cardio and exercise. So, again, how much, you know, the scientific evidence says that you create insulin resistance by going on a carnivore diet or, or ketogenic diet, but that's not in the context of exercise. No. And I was going to say... Yeah. Works off the opposite. The high fat diet can destroy insulin sensitivity. Yeah, so, so that's what know, I mean. Yeah, that's so yeah, it, it causes it's insulin resistance. It causes yeah. insulin resistance. Yeah, and I notice that myself as well. If I don't, you know, do the cardio and and training, that if I just follow a ketogenic diet, I actually lose insulin sensitivity and yeah. I get flatter and softer. Um, especially the in the contraction legs. is what's causing the glute 4 translocation. Exactly, yeah. So I, I need to keep doing that on this ketogenic diet, but I also know that I need a little bit of glucose uptake post-workout yeah. to keep those glute 4 uh, activators uh, going, you know, keep the metabolic process going. Yeah. So I have about 50 to 80 grams of carbs post-workout. And then, uh, well, whatever the fuck I want on Sunday, because on Sunday, it's if I want to eat a pastrami sandwich with fat, saturated yeah. fat, full with it, and then some uh, some high fructose corn syrup from uh, from ketchup. Of course, I'm going to go for it, man. I got a yeah. life. When it's I funny, got a wife, moderation. I got a life. I got to eat. <laughs> yeah, all these things in moderation still are okay. Yeah, once a week, it's totally fun, man. It's totally fun. So, yeah, I, I'm not against people trying it. I just uh, wonder what the long term things is. But then again, you know, the long term with a ketogenic diet and the long term with a carnivore diet or or you know, a vegan diet. Yeah, that's all. Kind of there probably won't be, well, there won't be a long term because they'll try the next diet that comes out in two weeks from now. Oh, all right. Should we just like come up with the anabolic round table diet? Why don't we do our own diet? Yeah. It was so boring. Yeah, I don't, I don't think no one's no one's going to prescribe to our healthy eating standards. What about two the, eggs? What about the <laughs> French fry diet? French fry diet. <laughs> but you can only have two fries a day, that's your entire diet. Right? There's no isoleucine either, so you'll upregulate all these other fiber products. Yeah, that shit. yeah. Yeah, remember, guys, remember the potato diet? The potato only diet it was very popular yeah. in the 50s and 60s. People lost crazy weight on that as well. Well, ask Dean. I mean, in Ireland, that's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if you don't feel a lot of happy in Ireland. Right? Open my front door and shout over to the neighbor in the next <laughs> place in the field. <laughs> Fuck, man. Like in, in Vietnam during the world, uh, the war, they ate. Taro, mm -hmm. 
which is Ooh. and that that's all they ate and that has even less nutritional value. Yeah. This is just well, all they had during the war. 